Oh, fun. You're live. Is We're it, live. We're live? Okay, fantastic. Okay. So let me just... Um, I'm going to see... I'm going to be able to see the comments if people come in. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put it in such a way that I can see the comments. Okay. Last time um, with Stacy, I think my voice was so choppy. Oh no, what's going on here? I don't know. I think it should be. Yeah, this says that we're live on Facebook. So. Do you see it? Okay, good, great, great. So I can see the comments. And I think there was a blanket on my router, and that's why. Oh. <laughs> blankets are out, please. <laughs> okay, we are live. Hello, everyone. This is Dr. Araya, your um, rapid transformational coach in the areas of parenting, relationship, and life coaching. And I have only one mission, and that is to empower you to live your authentic self and your full potential with ease, grace, and joy. And today I have David, and it's going to be so exciting because we're going to talk about intuition, um, kind of a continuation of our last week discussion with Stacey, and leadership. And I love this word leadership because I do believe uh, that this word leadership and le being a leader is not only, uh, you know, in companies and when you work or where you're a business owner, but it's actually about life. We are, we are supposed to be the leaders of our life, even in parenting, you are the leader, you know to your children, right? If you're a teacher, you're a leader of the classroom. So I do believe that and I, but that's as far as I feel in my heart, I haven't done any research or it's not my, you know, um, what I do really. I don't use that word so much, but I'm so excited to learn from you about leadership, intuitive leader within, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so please introduce yourself, David. Tell us about your background, what you're doing now, what you did before, what happened. <laughs> <laughs> you go from there. Yeah, well, first of all, thanks for the opportunity. I always love the opportunity to speak with, um, you were on my podcast, which is a conscious way forward. So it was super fun. So now we're getting to do it again. And, you know, I would call myself like the, a reinventor, like I reinvent myself every 10 years. So in my 20s, I was in the banking industry and public relations. And then I decided to, I had a job at the White House, two blocks from the White House and like it's a really fancy bank. And then I quit my job when I turned 30 and I went to work in um, Oakland, California in an urban school district. So I took like a 70,000 pay cut or something like that and left the fancy job and the three piece suit <laughs> when I turned 30. And then through from 30 to 40, I worked at one of the best charter school organizations in the country that is called Summit Public Schools, and it's nationally ranked. And I was a teacher and a principal and an executive. And then I turned 40 and I was like, oh, Mark Zuckerberg is giving us $100 million. So I should stay here for the rest of my life, right? And then I was like, no, I don't, I don't want to do that either. So I left, again, reinvented myself and decided that I would go and create my own school, left the Bay Area, moved to Sacramento, and and then I guess I'm accelerating because instead of waiting till 50, <laughs> at 45, I decided that I, would, I was just telling you that I said, I like Jeffrey Allen because he talks about how he went from an engineer to uh, an energy worker, or a wisdom teacher. And so now I tell people I'm an executive transitioning to an, a wisdom teacher. And so that's my current work. But leadership has been at the heart of what I've always done. So I'm still really passionate about reforming education and making sure our schools are better. And the through line for me is always intuition. And how did I come up with the name Intuitive Leader Within? Intuition. <laughs> so when I started my podcast, I got a really clear message that I should start a podcast called The Intuitive Leader Within. And then I looked it up and there's one of the like foremost leadership expert, experts, John, John Maxwell. He has a book called The Leader Within and a program. So I was like, well, because I was the first going to call it the leader within. And I'm like, oh. So then I, then I decided to call it the intuitive leader. And then I noticed that there were a bunch of podcasts with that. So I was like, oh, intuitive leader within. <laughs> but then I didn't name the podcast that because it was a little more expensive as I got into the wisdom teaching and realized that it was much bigger than just talking about leadership. So tell us, let's get into the, to the, to the juice. <laughs> what is intuitive uh, leader within? What, what, is, what does that mean? What, what does it you know, yeah. represent for you? Yeah, so what really hit me was, well, first of all, I think 
the, I've been getting these messages for a few years, these downloads, these intuitive messages that even before COVID, it was really clear to me that we were going to embark upon a massive shift. And then when COVID hit and the whole 2020 happened, you know, remember that, then I realized that my first YouTube video I did in February or January of 2020 was about the shift from the old style of leadership to the new style of leadership. And so you said you weren't really sure about the research and leadership. And I loved your opening because that's the same belief that I have. And it was the same belief we had at my charter school. That we believe every single person was a leader, including the students, including the parents. And so everything we did was very collaborative and we never believed in this kind of hierarchical leadership. And so, but then as I got into the spiritual journey, I started feeling this shift coming where it was going to be not only were my beliefs going to be front and center, but this is the future is that we're moving, we're shifting to, instead of going and looking for someone on the outside to give you information or looking for, you know, the God in the sky or the person at the top of the organization, you're, you're actually going within. Mm-hmm. And that's where your intuitive leader within lives. And so you actually can follow your internal guidance system and get every answer you ever need. That's the intuitive leader within. And so, like you said, whether you're a mom, whether you're a dad, whether you're a CEO, whether you're a fast food worker, I don't care what your title is in this world, the material world, but you are the leader. And I left my house when I was 17 years old. So I, I always tell people, I've been the CEO of my life since mm-hmm. I was 17. Like I didn't get the official title until a few years ago, but, and I always say the leaders that are actually the most effective are the ones that don't have the titles, like the moms. Yes. Talk about project leadership. Managers, right? Project managers. Oh my gosh, the like, moms are yeah, amazing. If I like big, big company that people who have been, have had parents, I would say, oh, they know what to do like that. They, they know how to get things done. So yes. they've experienced it, right? Yeah, and so what's really happening is this shift that's occurring is asking us to, so what I really believe in the next 10 years, nine years by 2030, is that we're being asked to, all the institutions are going to start crumbling. They're going to be reimagined, reinvented. You're seeing what's happening with the stock market. You're seeing what's happening with the storming of the capital, the presidency, the education system, the banking. I mean, you can go on and on. So I don't know if they'll be blown up. That I'm not sure about. But they will be vastly different 10 years from now, 9, 10 years from now. And so what we're being asked to do is to recreate and rebuild and, and reimagine those systems from the bottom up. So that's the shift is that before it was, you know, wait for someone to give you the, you know, there's someone at the top and then there's 42 layers between what you're doing, like a school district. So I'm I'm in education, school district. There's a school board up here, then there's a superintendent, then there's a bunch of principal, oh, actually before, after the superintendent, there's all the director level of the district, then there's the principals, then there's the teachers, then there's students, right? So if you're a teacher, your decision-making has been affected by all these layers. So the schools I run, right, top down. So the schools I run, I just say, every teacher here is a leader. Everybody here is able to make decisions and nobody's above anybody. We're in a circle. And there's a book that I love called Reinventing Organizations, which really actually has codified this and talks about what they call teal leadership, which is this idea that it's the next evolution of leadership. And if you infuse that with the spiritual journey, I have gotten to a point where I only answer to one person and it's not even me. It's not, it's my higher intelligence because I'm not a person. I'm just a presence, right? I'm the, I'm the presence. And so if I try and ask my person self for answers, it's going to be like the ego. It's going to be like, Oh, go make a million dollars. Go make that person look bad. Argue about this. It's like, I ask the presence, like, what is, how do I serve today? What is my next step? And it's a moment by moment moment by moment, ground yourself in present moment awareness, and then just ask for the next step. I love that. I think in religious science, uh, Michael Beckwith comes from that, I think from that um, kind of way of thinking, uh, agape in, in uh, mm-hmm. California. Big fan. They call it um, the senior partner. Yes. Right? Yes. You're going to consult yes. the senior partner within you. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Yes. Because we're all sovereign beings. And that's the other shift that really has to happen is, you know, in our, in our inner Sangha, which I know you've heard about, and I'd love to talk about it at some point. I just was speaking with a woman today who said that, I said, can you do, please, we've been together for three months and she's, oh my gosh, she'd had so many massive transformations. And I said, she asked me for advice. And I said, can you do me a favor? Let's play a game. 
you gotta have fun, right? Let's play a game for 24 hours. Don't ask anybody for advice. <laughs> and ask one person for advice. Don't ask your person for advice. Ask the presence for advice. She's like, is this fire good? Should I do this? How much should I charge? And I said, just wait for the guidance and see what the guidance tells you. And what I can tell you is for the, since COVID hit, I've done that every second of every day. I love it. Oh, wow. Ask for the guidance. And you know, then people say, oh, how did you launch your podcast? How did you, you know, I have um, a long list of coaching clients. I've had to start turning people away. How do you, how did you launch the Inner Sangha, a $3,000 program that is massively transforming people's lives? What was your plan? How did you write it all down? What research did you, what strategy? And I was like, I didn't know that. I literally got into the present moment. I asked for guidance. I asked for guidance. And then I acted. That's so hard. what is this? This is the integration of the masculine and the feminine energy. So you tell me like you yeah. didn't uh, consult any business coach what to do with that because Inner no. Sangha was extremely, was massively successful, right? You could fill it up like that and you're, you're having the second round, I suppose. You can talk about yeah. it. Yeah. So you, you didn't consult any business coach. Oh, you I have a business coach, your friend, Catherine Roy. But guess what? She got, she got sick and we didn't talk for months. So I talked to her last week and she goes, what have you done since I've been sick? I said, she said, you lost a, launched a mastermind and she didn't, she hadn't, I mean, I love her to death. She's amazing, but she didn't give me any of that advice. She was teaching me how to use LinkedIn and we hadn't even got to like products and programs and all that. So then she said, what do you need me for? <laughs> like, you just did a mastermind and filled it up and have these massive testimonials. Okay. So, because here's the thing, when you are following the guidance of your highest intelligence, there's no need for plans. There's no need for formulas. Wow. There's no need for advice. There's no need for coaches because it's really like the ability we all have within ourselves, the intuitive leader within us. Yeah. And if, if we don't trust it. And so we just trust that. And I will tell you, I've done the most bizarre things by trusting it. And you don't know, you think it's an outcome. I will message somebody and that a woman at Evolve didn't talk to her for two years. And I just got a meditation that said message this woman named Janet. So I just messaged her and said, I don't know why we're talking, but I was told to message you. And I picked it right away. Because the longer you wait, the more that this little beautiful thing that can drive you down, take you down, <laughs> the way. and put you into the jungle, <laughs> will start to show you that you're wrong and that you're crazy. Why would you reach out to someone you met for five seconds at a ball two years ago? And blah, blah, blah. So I just messaged her. I'd say, I don't know why we're talking, but basically we're meant to, meant to talk. Oh, guess what happened out of that? homeschools her children she's always wanted to do all these beautiful things she's got seven children and she's the most beautiful uh, homeschool mom I've ever met like all these beautiful collaborations again they didn't, ha didn't happen right away because the outcome's like oh well I'm sure we'll do a project but but I know at some point she and I will be doing something magical so I'm not working with linear time mm -hmm. right outcome based linear time I'm just working with intuition which says you're supposed to talk to her so now she's a close friend and she wants to write a book about me Wow. wow your life story is so amazing can I write a book and I was like sure let me know when you're ready so I don't know where it's going so basically I, I will not work in outcomes anymore and look I worked at one of the best schools charter schools organizations it's, it was named as one of the top 10 companies by fast company so even though it's a school it was named as the best top 10 companies it's nationally ranked US News World Report Newsweek one of the best schools in the country right Meg Whitman gave millions of dollars. All the tech titans have given, given money to this organization. And I can tell you right now, that formula is great. They got a lot of success. But it almost killed me. No. It was too much strategy, too much planning, too much asking the experts what you're supposed to do. And we're done with asking the experts. Because let's see what an expert would have told us in December of 2019. <laughs> right? So the experts actually are the problem. I'm sorry to say it, but we're, we're coming into a new earth. Yes. The next 10 years we'll be building the new earth. I don't want to be asking somebody who built the 20th century earth, how I'm supposed to build the new earth. First. Exactly. So why would I do that, right? Yes, I think we talked about this in your podcast where I, um, I think it was a Mind Valley Masterclass where she showed vision, showed like, the first phone, the, the most recent phone, the first car, the most recent car, the first TV, the most recent TV, and the first classroom, the, the most recent classroom, no change. Like it's exactly the yes. same, you know, like a factory, like the teacher is there, you have to listen, you have to memorize, and all these beautiful children that we have, like probably 
many, many types of intelligence. We just have to kind of be honing in one intelligence and yes. you, you get judged because of it. Um, mm -hmm. so it's, and I, I agree with you. And um, I, I want to plug in uh, here holly hall because she she also told me that in five you said 10 years but she said in five years the education system will shift mm -hmm. so right. i want to I talk about the pr practicality of this so when you talk about so i i get the intuitive leader with it yeah. I, this this is what i teach as well like in my classes there are some points that you know after a couple of sessions of course you, because you have to have some sort of knowledge a little bit in order to because you don't know we we don't know what we don't know we yeah. don't know what we know if we don't know we have it yeah. right yeah. But after some time, when my students ask me a question after a couple of seconds uh, after sessions, I tell them, you know what? Close your eyes. Ask mm -hmm. the same question of your stuff. What mm -hmm. would you say, right? Yes. So, yes. Um, yes. But how does it become? How does this become feasible? Really practical in an education system, for example, when there's so much bureaucracy and things have to trickle down from the top. Yeah. Um, so how, how is this even possible to implement in schools? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for asking me that question. OK, so here's the thing. We have to reimagine everything. OK, I'm a reinventor. I reinvent myself. I revolutionize things. I reimagine things. So we have to reimagine the system. And what's going to happen, and Holly and I have talked about this, what's going to happen, I told her in her 101 book, you know, Answers from the Universe, I was yeah, like, your, yeah. education, your education is spot on. It's not specific enough because she's not the expert in that area, but it's spot on. And I, because what she talks about is the same thing, I believe, is that in the education system, you're going to have a shift. Okay, so let's talk about what happened. Let me make the point and I'll give you the example. So you're going to have a shift of going from these top-down bureaucratic institutions to a bottom-up um, decentralized community-based systems, right? So let's take a school, for example. There's a district, which is a bureaucratic government institution that is controlling all of your kids' lives. Okay, let's be really direct. <laughs> so, and you have other options. You can go to private schools, and then it's just a smaller version of that. So you go to a Catholic school, it's the archdiocese. You go to a private school, it's the fill in the blank, the Christian school, whatever. It's always somebody at the top that's deciding your kids' lives every second of every day. So what needs to happen is we need to start building systems on the ground. And this is what's happening with the inner sangha. This is what everybody I coach is that we're gonna start building like, for example, a learning center. That's gonna happen in a community with a small group of families. It's already happened with the pod learning. So what happened with COVID? People are starting to see now wow, this school system is really interesting. All they do is worksheets, um, regurgitation. My wife asked me, this, this, I, the teacher seems really great. Our teacher used to train the teacher. She's the best teacher in the whole school. She does the same thing every single day. The same exact thing. It's robotic, not her fault. It's because the system has taught her that's what you're supposed to do. So you're getting these robotic people in a robotic system and parents are starting to see like, wow, this is what I send my kids to every day. And then even the private schools, you know, Danuka Rana is saying, hey, she just pulled her kids from an expensive private school because it's the same thing. They're doing worksheets, they're, they're, all, they're all being, they're not treated, being treated like sovereign beings. They're being treated like robots, cogs in the wheel. The best version is a little bit better, but it's the same system. So what's gonna happen is people like you and me, people like that are joining the inner song, people that I'm coaching are gonna start creating things from their essence, from intuitive guidance. That says, get a group of parents together and create. Um, I know you know Goli Baluchi, Goli Imam. Can't remember yeah. which name she uses, but anyway, she has a dream. The way we met was she has a dream to build a community in her a learning center and a community center in her area in Canada, where it's holistic and the parents are working with the kids. And so we're going to start building these across the world, and then it becomes a ripple effect. And then at some point, there's always a tipping point in every revolution or every to great change. And this is the time of great, the great awakening, the great change. I would say this is the, the biggest change since like the Protestant Reformation. Like this is a big, big, massive shift we're under, undergoing in belief systems and institutions. And so it's, it's going to happen. And there's going to be an example of goalie center and there's going to be all these small little things. And then what happens, right? With the revolution, at some point you consolidate it. The big fish start saying, oh, wait a minute. All the parents have left the traditional school system because there's all these little learning centers and they're pulling their money and they're changing the way they're paying things and the whole business models change, the school models change. And it's like, whoa, we better keep up or we're not going to get, you know, we're not going to do well in the market. 
That's what's happening with pod learning. You have parents that say, oh, we can hire a teacher. We can each pay $5,000 a year and hire a teacher. And now we have our own teacher and we just go into pods. And wow, this is so much better than the actual school that we were in before. Now it's a problem because not everyone can afford that, but you start to see that the market and the community and, and everybody started responding. Imagine everybody, including the children, responding to their own intuitive guidance. Yeah. We wouldn't have a school system. Nobody would go to it. That is fantastic. But how about the, the you know, I would imagine it would take a longer time to completely shift because they have to do, if, if uh, like e even with the homeschoolers, they have to pass some sort of test. What happens yeah, well, the whole system has to be dismantled. The whole testing system is a complete joke. I know. Um, that, will that change in a row? Like in, in yeah, it has to. It has to. It really, you know, it didn't really come in until the Bushes in the 90s and 2000s. So Jeb Bush did it in Florida and then George Bush did it as president. So then it became this whole accountability movement. But what you're going to see is that, okay, let me ask you a question or, and people listening. Did anyone think in 1988 that the Berlin Wall would fall down? No. <laughs> yeah. And then in 1990, you're like, well, what, what happened to that whole Soviet Union? Yeah, what happened? Like it's going to have to take a long time, right? To, to, to take down the biggest, you know, the biggest empire other than the United States at the time, 19, late 80s, it's going to take 20 years, 50 years, right? Yeah. Oh. Like a matter of days. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, okay, we have a whole new oh. system. Yes. Because it's because this is a ripple effect. Even our jobs is like factory like, right? Because we are, they are training our children to be this. Uh, have, have this myopic vision and do as the boss says and do not be a leader and you know otherwise you'll be kicked out or you won't get a raise um so it's the whole system is kind of robotic and it's just taking a severing people really starting from kindergarten it's, it's severing people from their true authentic self and there will be a time like after 50 or 60 or you know starts around 37 38 they're like oh what the heck am i doing, what am I doing? So um, really, that's what happened to me when I turned 40. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, do I want to do this until I die? This doesn't, too. I don't, I don't want to program until I die, right? I was a programmer. Yeah. So, um, and then it's just, it was I'm like, I, I'm a very weird person. I took an action, I just switched. But a lot of people, they're like, okay, safety, security, what's going to happen? Mm -hmm. But exactly. when we have, as you said, like change starts somewhere. We, 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 we are helping to raise children who can't think for themselves, who are not afraid, who are not subscribed to this fixed mindset. Okay, get go to college, go to get this job, be an employee. Like even right now, after many years, I'm still struggling because my parents were employees. I have been an employee. Yes, it's so yes. hard to shift this mindset that you know you're building up a business. Um, but I think it's 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 a crime, really. I don't know if you've read Rich Dad Poor Dad, but it's just oh, yeah. that we don't teach our children, right? And these are the most important things that like emotional intelligence, finances, mm -hmm. investment, mindfulness, you know, uh, empathy, helping the community. These are the things that are not, well, they talk about a little bit here and there, but it's not interweaved in the, into yeah. the education system. They're learning stuff, they're still learning, like the stuff that we learned back home in, in Iran, like math is so hardcore, like we had to learn so many things. Well, I'm not using that. Even if I, when I was an engineer, I was not using it. So uh, it's just why do we waste this, the brilliant time of our children just to cram their brain with the stuff? You know, geography exactly. and history, yeah, a little bit good, but you know, there are other things that are important. You know why we do it? Yeah. Because of fear. Because of fear. And this is what's happening to us right now is the universe has shaken us up and said, like, hey, you're all scared. You're running an education system from 1860. You're running a management system from 1930 in terms of corporate America. 85% of the average American worker is highly disengaged. You can look it up on the Gallup poll. 85%. Hello. Um, and so we have to reimagine our family structures. Having women try and work all day, you know, and then take care of the kids and then do the dishes and blah, blah. The whole entire thing needs to be reimagined. The family structure, having kids at home with us, um, raising humanity, which is uh, Ashley Avanashi, another Shafali person that I met through Shafali. She's doing something in Canada. It's called raising humanity and it's reimagining the whole family system and how the kids are being educated. I'm going to try and have her on the podcast, my podcast. And 
But what's happening is this fear is what drives us. And so everything, you are me, I am you, the whole, the whole thing is interconnected. So when I'm scared to do something, that's because I'm not following my inner guidance. Mm-hmm. right I'm listening to the person I'm listening to the human self mm-hmm. and the moment you start to follow the intuitive guidance system within you it doesn't operate in fear it doesn't operate in linear time it doesn't operate in separation and ego it just operates in truth. infinite possibilities and universal truth mm-hmm. and so I I would just ask everyone listening give me one good reason why you wouldn't follow your intuition every second of every day and your only answer will be based on a mind-based concept that doesn't make any sense to me. It won't make sense to me. I'll be like, so what, wait, what, so I shouldn't just fall. So, I mean, it's blowing my mind. The things that happen to me blow my mind. You know why? Because we live and this is our mind. Yeah. Okay. The expansion of the universe is bigger than anything we can imagine. Yes. So if we can... Like, I can't from the mind imagine that the school system will be different in 10 years. I can't from the mind imagine that someone like you and me could change the whole entire planet. My mind can't imagine that. But my highest intelligence, my intuition could say like, oh, well, if you keep connecting with people like Dr. Araya, and then you connect with people that are doing this, and and eventually more and more people are doing it, then like Dr. Shapali says, one's a million. And, And then the thing that changes is people start saying, hey, wait a minute, what's going on in that inner sangha? Like, what's... What's actually happening? You know, people there, they couldn't afford the three thousand dollars. Okay, like almost everybody in it. I don't want to out anybody, but like it's not. We're not rich people. Okay, the reason we did that is because guidance told us twelve people, three thousand dollars, thirteen weeks. And Stacy and I were like, how are we going to get people to pay three thousand dollars? Right? Like this is crazy. And we both got. This is how we knew it was true. We both got it at the same time, and then texted each other. I said, "What did you get?" And it said, go one, two, three. And we both said $3,000, wow. right? And then we went through it and we're like, oh, this makes sense. Not only because it's based on the market value, like most programs, 12, eight weeks, you know, if it's really intensive, it's about 3,000, you know, but it's also because the energy exchange that we put out there was beyond. It was it literally, <laughs> I was thinking like, I'm a basketball coach. I played basketball, like the end of the game, I'm like, <sighs> I'm just like laying down. Like I put my heart on the, on the, on the, on the court to play that game. That's what we did for 13 weeks with the inner sangha. And it's like, when you put your heart into it and the universe is guiding you every second of the way, these people, like, I know some of them are probably listening now, like they wowed us. Nothing our mind could ever, ever imagine the things that happened to them. Anybody who wasn't able to pay, like they were able to manifest the money or people that, you know, paid monthly, they paid a hundred months. They just figured it out. And we said, we said one thing. We said, don't ask your mind for a yes or a no. Ask your intuition. If you get a yes, jump in. And the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. Yes. So if you're going to overthink whether you're coming into the inner sangha, you're going to overthink your price of your course. You're going to overthink, overthink, over, and we're like, just jump in. See what it's like to jump into a group when your mind said, a couple of them are like, we've never paid three thousand dollars for anything, <laughs> and they're like, we didn't believe you, but we just said if the intuitive guidance is telling us, we're going to do it, and that like changed my life. Wow. I love that. So um, am I um, right in this speculation? So the whole school system, the whole, um, the way we are living, um, you know, marketing and business and all these things has been so far masculine. But now we are shifting to feminine energy, which is all about being and getting that, you know, receiving that um, wisdom from within and from the universe. Is that correct? Oh, absolutely. I did a podcast episode about this. I talked about the shift of leadership and I talked about how that definitely the divine feminine is here to, is, is going to come big time, big time. You're going to see it. And it's already shifting. I remember even just like you mentioned emotional intelligence. I remember reading in my men's health magazine, a very mainstream magazine back in 2002. And it, you know, it said they were talking about emotional intelligence. And I was like, I went to my principal when I was a teacher and I said, this is really interesting. Men's health is talking about this because we were doing it. We were very cutting edge and they were, and I was like, Oh, so this is the future. And she's like, yeah, absolutely. If men's health is talking about it. And now, and then they started talking about meditation for police officers, just like two, three, like three or four years ago. I was like, Ooh, see starting to shift. So yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely. um, So, so now what I'm feeling is 
emotional intelligence just started coming in about 20 years ago, which is a very feminine, you know, emotion, feminine leadership style, like check in with people how they feel. <laughs> <laughs> Don't just tell them what to do. And now it's like becoming much more mainstream. So yeah, you're going to see the divine feminine make a huge, huge um, comeback or whatever you want to call it. Like most of the, the world leaders that are women, like the New Zealand leader and other female leaders had the best COVID management plan. Yeah, Taiwan, I think, right? That's Taiwan. Kind of, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's just a little, this is a little glimpse into the future. And what's going to happen is you're going to see the integration of the masculine and the feminine, which is what, what I have always embodied. And it took me a long time to come to terms with the fact that I was very feminine. And people would always say, like, are you gay or whatever? And I'm just like, so I, I suppressed it. I suppressed it. And then I was like, oh, this is my superpower. Yes. Like, and we all have, we all have the both masculine and feminine. Yeah, and like, absolutely. It has to be balanced. Like we, we, us women should be really, should balance the masculine in order to put really good boundaries. Like I have clients that, you know, this, they say, oh, they listen, my kids listen to their dad, not, not to me, because the, the man has this bound, like this energy about him to have good boundaries. That's yeah. the masculine energy. So we should have that. We should cultivate that. Yes. So everyone yes. has both feminine and absolutely. masculine. And we have to balance it. Um, so um, I wanted to ask you something I forgot. Um, Ah, oh, let's get my mind. <laughs> it's okay. I'll come back. But so this, this, this is brilliant. So um, just leave the leave a comment with your with the link to your inner sangha. Oh yeah, you can check it out. And um, oh, I wanted to mention this. So when you mentioned police officers, so my my dissertation was in is in mindfulness, right? The yeah. three one minute mindful breathing. Remember that. Mm -hmm. So I went to the police station here in Pacific Grove. I said, you know what? I got this and I'm going to do a free talk for, for police officers. So it's, yeah, it's, it, it has to, like, it's not functional. It no. something needs to, ch everything needs to, ch not something, but something and everything needs to change. Like all yeah. the distance because it's too masculine. It's too um, severed from that inner being and masculine energy is really good. It's all about termination and decision-making. I want to get something else. Yeah. I want to say something else that is very controversial, but it's funny. Maybe I mentioned it in your podcast, but I have this theory. Okay. And this theory says, it's kind of controversial. I think men should take care of children at home when they're little, because us women, they're just, we are like, do this, do that. But men are like, all oh, about play and let them, <laughs> you know? And then us women go to governments. Then we're not gonna have wars, and we're gonna be and we all about let's negotiate, you know, let's talk it out. So I really think this needs to shift. Like yeah. men stay inside. <laughs> it's very controversial, but that's my theory. I think it works. So we're gonna have a better life, better world, better earth. <laughs> I love it. I love it. No, and I, I totally believe you. And I do see. I as I'm sending your energy right now. I don't know the power that you have to make this shift, that if you know the power you have to make this shift because you already know it, right? And so I know my life's purpose is to help wake people up. I just did a three day silent retreat and it was like, I couldn't stop getting that on my meditation. It's like, you're just helping people wake up. That's your life's purpose. You think it's education, but it's not that anymore. It's all part of it because you're gonna wake up the educators and wake up the kids. Like the kids are already awake, but you're, you're, my, my purpose is to wake people up. And I feel like for you, it is to really show them there's another way. Yes. there's another way and you can say like I have a PhD I was an engineer and you can say look this way eh. I always say like eh, it was okay like almost killed me but if you want to come over here and play with us in this realm in this way and we're going to change the whole earth, like the whole we're going to just flow into the new earth I can be hard and seamless and be fun and and we're just of course the female intuition is going to be there because if you're following your guidance why wouldn't it be? You know, it's like there's no there's no separation in the in the universe. So anyway, exactly. I appreciate you taking the time. It, it, yeah, it's my pleasure to have you. But I want to mention something. I just um, said something yeah. to, to to my client two hours ago. But look, like when we look at nature or how the babies 
formed and developed in the womb. We have nothing to do with it. Maybe just at the beginning, nine months, so you'd be recreating a baby or look at nature. Everything is so in the flow. Yes. Everything is like seamless. We don't, we have nothing to do with it. But when it comes to our life and our thoughts, we think we are doing everything. We're in control, but really just letting go and just sit and get the answer and get inspired, take inspired action. That's the way to go. So um, I love our conversation, David. You should come you. back. I'm going to come to your podcast again. This is, or have another call. Maybe you give me my good news because every time, every time I talk, right. the first time some, something awesome has happened. This was so amazing. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. And um, I hope, I don't know, your words reach far and wide. Thank and you. see the new earth i mean it's already here but we can really see it manifest and then you know in the new yes. earth as you said i love that word new earth <laughs> thank you so much i send you love and thank see you. you soon okay bye all right bye bye, -bye. bye everyone